we're Zello. My name is Dawn McAvoy and I work for the brand team with the company. I'm joined here on stage today by Matt McQuillan and Jeff Harris, company founders. It's honestly because of customers and supporters like you that we're sitting here today talking about the story behind Zello. It's just as much your story as it is ours and we thank you for your time, your interest, and your loyalty. We've been really busy. <laughs> We've been working on this evolution for a while and we're incredibly excited to be able to talk to you about it today. Your input has been absolutely amazing. We have almost a thousand people joining us today, including I think the entire office back, in, back up on Young Street, so shout out to everybody in the office today. And we received hundreds of questions from you guys. Wanna let you know we went through every single question that we got. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna answer the most commonly asked questions for those of you who ask very, very specific questions related to your, your product usage or your account, know that someone from the company, if they haven't already, is gonna be reaching out to you to make sure those questions get answered. We realize that this is a really big change, a new product, a new company name. So who better to address, address the questions that you have and provide context for some of the changes than Matt and Jeff? So, gentlemen, let's, let's go ahead and get started to have a conversation. How did we get here? That's a great question. That's a good place to start, I guess, Don. Thanks so much. And thanks, everyone, for joining us this morning. Really appreciate you making time for this. Um, the most important thing we want to do today, obviously, is get to all the questions that have come in, as Don mentioned. But we thought it might make sense to start with a little bit of background and talk about how we ended up at this place with a new product and a new name. So if we go back. 20 years or so when career cruising was first started. We were recent graduates coming out of school and, and facing the same kinds of choices and decisions that, that most students face at that time. And we realized that it's pretty tough and we don't really know where we're gonna go next and we know lots of people in that same situation. So I think really the initial impetus for, for creating career cruising was trying to create a tool that we thought would be helpful for us as students. So, um, and I think as we got out there, we realized that developing something with students in mind brought something new and fresh to the market, and it was a great perspective to, to bring to the field. Uh, fortunately, the initial product really caught on. Um, it, it was quite successful. And then I would say we spent the next 10 to 15 years really responding to the feedback that we would get from educators and administrators saying, your program is great, it would sure be nice if it did this. Or, you know, we're supporting ILPs or EDPs, whatever it might be. Can you help us do that? We need these reports to show the state that we're doing a good job. Can you help us with that? So all of those requests, all of that input allowed us to build out a more robust, more powerful program over the years that really met the needs of, of educators and of students. And, and that, that was great. All we had to do was listen and, and uh, interpret and then, and then build those tools. Um, and, and all of that really went well until I would say about five years ago where we, we kind of stopped and we paused and we reflected it on where we had come. And I think overall we felt great about how people were using the program to solve some really mission critical problems um, at, at their schools. But we also felt like maybe we hadn't done everything that we wanted to do. That maybe there were opportunities to, to get better. And I think one of the things we did is kind of put the student hat back on again and imagine what does this feel like as a student? What does it feel like to use this program right now? And we felt like it felt pretty good, but not, maybe not amazing, maybe not as good as it could feel. And so I, I think it was really that realization that allowed us to start to develop some of the principles that really were the foundation for, for Zello. And some of those principles were putting the student at the center focus on user experience, thinking about creating something for all students, all pathways, thinking about something that is very accessible, regardless of someone's learning level, capabilities, position in life. So those and others became the principles that guided the development of Zello. Then all we had to do was build it, and, and that of course took, took a while. Um, but we're pleased now to be able to bring it to the market and to be able to talk to you about it. I just want to add a few things to that story of how Zello came to be. And interestingly enough, this weekend, I went back to Queen's University for my 25th reunion and meeting up with all sorts of people from, from, uh, from the past, which was really interesting. 
Um, but one of the things I was thinking about was um, how I came to be in the program that I eventually uh, graduated from, which was, was commerce. And when I arrived at Queen's University in my first year and I was in Frosh Week, I actually was not registered for commerce. I was registered for liberal arts. And at some point during those first seven days, I switched my program to commerce. And the interesting thing about that is when I was talking to people on the weekend, I was trying to remember why. Why did I make that switch? It's a pretty, pretty significant yeah, switch. You'd think I'd be able to recollect exactly why that happened. I can't remember at all. And why I liken this a little bit to the story of Zello is when we think about how did Zello come to be, there wasn't any one thing. Uh, I think there were different things that were swirling around all at the same time. And a couple of those things, uh, one would be some new guidance curriculum that was issued by the, the Ministry of Education here in Ontario, which had created a simplified model for looking at how do you plan your future. And we found that very intriguing and very helpful. But when we looked at career cruising, we didn't really see that that simplified model was readily apparent for students. So that was one thing where we thought, hmm, okay. The other interesting thing was we've been around now for 20 years and we have people that use career cruising in high school now working at career cruising. <laughs> and some of those people absolutely love career cruising, but for a number of them, when interviewing them and finding out that they had used career cruising and asking them, well, how did you find the program? It, it was good, it was good. I'm thinking that's, that's not really the reaction we're looking for. Especially if you're for in sure. an interview, that's your chance to be positive, <laughs> to be effusive even. So if, if that's not happening, it's a little bit of a, you know, bit of, bit of a, a head shake. I think the other part was we also had friends, family friends coming to us and saying, you know, my son or my daughter, they're 13, they're 14, they're not sure what they're going to do, they're struggling, can you help? I know you do something with, with careers and with education. And so, sure, we can, I can give you access to the program, but I'm thinking in my head, do I really know that career cruising is going to solve this problem for this friend, of, for the mm -hmm. child of a friend of mine? And, well, yes, it might, it might, but the confidence level was not where I felt it should be. And I think the final thing was looking around at the world of technology and seeing great software being built being released, seeing engagement, uh, engagement levels that people have with software today, and looking at the kind of engagement level that we had with career cruising, and, and we were just feeling that, you know, can we do better? Uh, and I think we, we decided, yes, we, we can do better. Um, I don't think we realized what a momentous decision it was at the time. It was the right one, and there were, there were lots of reasons we felt it was right. One story I wanted to mention is that um, for the six months leading up to that decision point. Uh, I'd been working with uh, our product experience, had a product experience and our lead designer. And they'd been telling me, Matt, we're gonna have to start over to really get to where we wanna go. And of course, I'm thinking that's gonna be a massive project. Uh, is there any other way we can do it? So finally, when Je you know, Jeff and I said, okay, this is, this is what we have to do. What I didn't realize is that our lead designer went home that night and said to his wife, you're never gonna believe what happened today. <laughs> They're actually going to do it. <laughs> He couldn't believe it. Um, so anyway, very glad that we did do it. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a journey, as Don mentioned, to, to get here today, but we're really excited about what we've created, and most importantly, we're really excited about what we think it will be able to do for students. All right. So let's start with the most commonly asked question first. This is the big one. How is Zello different and better than career cruising? Very good question. After three years of working on this new version, I hope it is better <laughs> and different. I'm actually quite sure it is. But maybe just give you a little bit of, um, of thinking and, and, and some ideas about where we see the big differences are between the two products. Uh, I think the first is what I mentioned in terms of the story of Zello is a model, a, a simplified model that is based around three pillars. And these pillars, the first one would be about me. And so understanding that a key part of figuring out uh, what you want to do after high school, what you want to do with your life, is that self-knowledge, understanding who you are. So 
one of the pillars of the program in terms of navigation and everything that you're doing is around that piece about me. The second is a pillar of explore options. So making it very clear that, you know, step one is understanding yourself. Step two are exploring all the options out there. And the final pillar is goals and plans. So goals and plans involves integrating those two pieces of knowledge, yourself and what's happening in the real world, and figuring out how am I going to get to where I want to go. So a big part is this model that we feel is very powerful, although simple, very powerful. And what it does in our minds is help students understand the interconnectedness of understanding themselves, understanding their options, and how to go forward um, with that model to plan for that successful future. So that's a big difference. Um, if we look at a, another one, is that we've introduced a new feature called Lessons. So when we started testing with students, what we realized was that a lot of the things that we think they know, they actually don't know. Very simple example. If you ask a student, a 13-year-old or a 14-year-old, What's the difference between university or college? What's the difference between a two-year college and a four-year college? We as adults assume they know that. Fact is, they don't. What about career demand? Do you, know, do you understand career demand? How would you use that information? What is career demand? Mm -hmm. So what we decided was, it's great to build a system that helps you uh, create those goals and plans, but if you don't have the underlying skills and knowledge to understand what you're deciding or how to decide, that's a problem. So we're gonna need lessons to create that understanding. But more than that, what we also feel is that if a student has a plan, at any time a wrench could be thrown in to the process. Maybe that student has changed. They no longer wanna focus on science and engineering. They're now more interested in something entirely different. Or maybe they look out and the career that they were thinking of it's starting to dwindle. Maybe that career demand is, is, is going down. So they might have to pivot, they might have to change, they might have to adapt. And if they don't have the skills and knowledge to do that, then we haven't done their job and they may not be able to create that successful future that, they're, that they would like to create. Um, the other part that's different is experience. Jeff mentioned experience at the, at the beginning. And experience is one of those things where it's, it's very hard to measure um, for those of you who, who were using computers as far back as I was, you might remember Windows 3.1. Did a lot of good things, but you can, if you think about the experience of Windows 3.1 and you compare it to your Android phone, your iPhone of today, you know that that experience is very different. How we, are, how we explain that, we can talk about it all day. It's a great experience. Um, but in any case, that was what we felt we needed to do in building Zelle to have a great experience. And what I can tell you is based on hundreds of student testers, based on early adopters who are using Zello today in the classroom, students are having a lot of fun using Zello. We're very excited about that. For us, that is the holy grail. But the experience part is a huge um, aspect of what we wanted to achieve and we feel like we're on the, on the right track there. Um, if we think about other things that are, that are really important, um, Jeff mentioned earlier accessibility. And one of the things that we set out very early on to make sure of was that we were addressing all students. Um, obviously, students that are highly motivated, that are high achievers, they were going to be able to use career cruising and get a lot out of it and be successful. But we wanted to make sure that all students would be served by what we were building. And as part of that, it meant meeting the rigorous international standards of accessibility that are out there. It was something we had to learn how to do well, but it was something that was very important to us. Um, something else that is very important as well, and I think a, a big piece of Zello, is personalization. And what we wanted was for students to be able to see Zello as something that they made their own. So as part of that, they can create their own avatars, they can create their own cover images, they can upload um, pieces of art they might have created, essays, whatever that they feel will help them tell their story to parents, to educators, to counselors, and really make Zello their own. In testing, again, what we've seen is that immediately they are gravitating to those parts of the program where they can make it their own, and it is, it is from what we can see, 
um, something that they're they're finding is is actually the case. So that part is is really exciting as well. So we talked about the experience and talked about um, you know in terms of accessibility and, and and a few other things, but we also made a very big investment in the content itself. So. When we started to build Zello, one of the things we looked at was the reading level of all of our content. And we were surprised to discover that reading level is a lot higher than we thought. Uh, it was around grade 11 and grade 12. Uh, and looking at some of the other products out in the market, we found most of those were at a university or a graduate level. So the reading level was not really appropriate. So what we decided is that we have to rewrite everything that we have. And that's about a million words of content. Uh, and we also have to retranslate it all into Spanish and French. So it was a big investment, but we felt a necessary one and an important one. Um, so that, that has been done. And we also uh, invested in all new photography, visually stunning photography for each of our career profiles. Uh, so again, that was, that was very important. And the last thing I wanted to mention was I've been talking a lot about the students. And obviously that's very important. Educators and everything that educators use has also, just like Zello, been rebuilt from the ground up. And every step of the way, we've been touching base with educators, having their feedback put into the program, and following the same process of ensuring that that experience that the educator has is the best experience possible, and we're creating wow for them as well every step of the way. Very good. I think this next one is for you too. So you've walked us through how Zello differs from career cruising, but can you talk a little bit about the features that aren't included in Zello? We get this question a lot. Yes, true, and, and yeah, it's interesting. Of, of, the, um, of the many questions that we got, there were a lot of very specific questions about, well, what about, what about is it gonna do this? What about this feature? And one of the things just to, to appreciate is that, you know, as Jeff mentioned, uh, we've been building this product for, for 20 years. And so in that process, we have had feedback from 50 states, 10 provinces, three territories, and we've done our best to meet very different um, initiatives and, and expectations across all of those, those different environments. Um, so when it came time to rebuild Zello, to try and do all of that right out of the gate, we realized just wasn't going to be possible. So what we started with was building um, those key features that we felt were essential such that students could build a plan for a successful future. And, and it was tough to decide which components those were, um, but what we have today and what we've built so far is a very strong foundation for the future. Uh, we've built features that we do believe will help students create those plans today and be successful in doing so. But if I think about what we're trying to do with Zello, we are in the process of building a skyscraper. And what we've built right now is an amazing foundation, but we still will have to add many, many stories on top of that foundation. Um, so if we think about specific features, a couple things to keep in mind. One is that we are adding to Zello uh, all the time. New features are being released, and that will be the process for now until many, many years from now. Um, the second thing is that our process for building new features has changed quite a bit. Um, so what, we're, what we do now is we look at something that we have in, in Career Cruising today, and we try and look at it with fresh eyes. We try and approach it with a blank slate, and we try and look at you know, whether or not this feature, is it being used today? We can look at the data that we have. How often is it being used? Who's using it? Uh, are they using it correctly? Do they understand it? But even more than that, we want to dig deeper and try and understand, okay, with this particular feature, what problem are we trying to solve? Try to break it down to its, to its real core. And then once we think we've understood the problem, then we start to design some ideas around how this feature could make its way into Zello. The next step is to take those ideas and test them with students and with educators. And that's always, a, it can be a very humbling process. <laughs> uh, sometimes you're rewarded and, and people love what you've come up with. Other times you fall on your face and you have to start again. Um, 
But regardless, uh, every feature that we have in Career Cruising, as, it, as we look at moving it into Zello, will follow that same process of evaluation, of experimentation, of iteration until we get it right. So if you're, you know, in terms of making that switch from Career Cruising to, to Zello, um, what, what may or may not be there, I think there's sort of three things to keep in mind. One is that we, as I mentioned, we're always adding things. So if it's not there today, it could be there tomorrow, something to keep in mind. Uh, the second is that whatever we have built may be different, but it, it may be different, hopefully it's better, um, but the purpose of any feature is to solve a problem. Maybe we solved it differently, but that, that's the goal. And, and so you may find things change, but they're helping you accomplish what you need to. Um, and the third thing is that it is possible that something we had in Career Cruising doesn't ever make it to Zelle. <coughs> but know that if that's the case, it's probably because somewhere along the way we found that students didn't understand it, it wasn't being used, what we hoped to accomplish was not happening, um, it, it, or, or it could be any number of reasons, but understand that a long and thorough process uh, happens for each and every feature and any decision that is made um, you know, we think is, is done for the right reasons. Uh, and that, that being said, I'd say 99% of what is in Career Cruising and, and is not in Zello is still on the table. If it's not there, we're, we're looking at working on it and, and investigating it further. Okay, thanks. Jeff, I think this next question <coughs> is actually for you. Um, so, this is a good one. This is near and dear to my heart. What's with the new name? Why Zello? Mm -hmm. Well, no, that's a great question. <laughs> and obviously, obviously, we get that a fair bit. So it all started one day when I was walking through the office and walked past Matt's desk, and he was sitting there giggling to himself. <laughs> and I thought, well, I wonder what's going on. So I walked past again. He was still giggling to himself. I said, you know, what? what is it? What's so funny? And he said, Zello. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> he said, Zello. Doesn't that sound great? And so I said, he said, say it. Say Zello. OK, fine. Zello. Sounds just like Jello. <laughs> I'd like to change the name of the company. Let's do it. No. <laughs> that's, not how, that's not how the story went. Um, I like that version. Yeah. It, we gave it a bit more thought than that. And some of the questions that we, we have received online and over the phone have been really great. People are asking, you know, you know, why are you doing this? It doesn't sound anything like career cruising. It's not even related to the field of, of career guidance. Why would you make such a change? We have all these support materials. So I just. First of all, I want to assure people that it is not a change that we took lightly. And um, any inconvenience that we're, we're causing other people was probably felt a hundredfold uh, by Don, who had to navigate all of this and make all these kinds of changes uh, to go from a well-established brand to something brand new. So very, very difficult decision. But the, the seeds of it were actually sown quite a while ago when we started to realize there were some issues with career cruising. So um, first of all, the word career is not especially exciting for students. It, it, it feels like something that's, you know, it's work related, which it is, and it feels some, like something that's serious, which it is. But do we need it to, to sound so serious and feel so serious for them? Um, and, and also what we're doing isn't just about career. You know, it's about life planning. It's about education planning. It's about understanding who you are as an individual. And so career felt like a box that, that um, was becoming less and less comfortable. Um, cruising was even worse. Um, cruising is this, this kind of laissez-faire you know, activity that you would indulge in in a fairly passive way. I'm just going to cruise through. I'm going to browse through the program. And that is certainly not the kind of experience we were trying to deliver. We were trying to deliver an immersive experience, an engaging experience. We wanted people to personally connect with the program and get, and get uh, engaged with it. So career and cruising, we were starting to feel the problems with those words for quite some time. And for me, um, the straw that really broke the camel's back was having a, a friend of the family come up to me one time and say, um, you know, for March break, we're thinking of going on a cruise. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? <laughs> Having never been on a cruise, I don't have any, I didn't have any good ideas. And I had to kind of go through explaining to her that that's not actually what we do and, and, and so on. So, so there were lots of problems with the name. Um, but coming up with a new name was just as problematic. We literally had a deck of hundreds of words. We had a team working on this project. 
everyone contributed every idea because we, we knew how important this project was and we didn't want to come out at the end of it and have people say, I don't, I don't like it, right? So we had to really invest in it. So everyone had an opportunity to contribute the words that they felt would make sense. And then we just started to winnow that down over time, a very laborious process. And then the words that we ended up with at the end that were real words, I mean, one of the ones that comes to mind is innate, which was, which was a very good word, one that I liked. But it, it, even that word, and I just use it as an example, had problems. Because the idea that everything is innate, well, that captures a fair bit of it. There are certainly components of us that are innate and, and don't change too much over time. But there are other things that change with experiences, right? And so that doesn't capture the whole kind of um, nurture aspect of, of who we are. And so we had to reject that one. So we soon found ourselves in a situation where there wasn't a real word, a, a real word that had established meaning that would do the job for us. Any word that we could think of just didn't quite fit. And so we knew we were going to have to have something that was made up. In the case of Zello, um, it has an association with hello, which has a lot of the attributes that we like. It's warm, it's friendly, it's a greeting. And when we started to play around with that and kind of riff on it a bit, and we came up with ideas like, you know, hello world, say Zello to your future, it really started to, to hit home that, hey, this, this, maybe this does capture us and this does fit. And so, so we've adopted it enthusiastically and it will be our job to kind of embody this brand with all the meaning that, that uh, we feel it should have. And, uh, and we'll do that over time. That's great. Totally agree. Um, what, what I can add to that is that I can appreciate how some of you might find it a little strange. Um, it, it will probably take some time to get used to. Um, the one thing I can tell you a story about is that through this process of coming up with the new name, I involved my family, I have a son and a daughter and my wife, close family friends, a lot of brainstorming, some of them involved with marketing, and everyone had their own ideas about you know, what they thought would work. And so we had all these suggestions which were, were part of the, the pool of, of ideas that we, that we considered. And so when we finally made our decision, uh, you know, I went home and, and said, guys, we, we've got it, We're, it's, it's, it's Zello. <laughs> no, 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 well, you're, you're making a big mistake. Close family friends who had lots of good ideas, guys, it's, it's Zello. No, no, that's wrong. <laughs> so uh, we've been living with it now for, I'd say, uh, what? couple months the whole company's been thinking about it and yeah, the you know, been getting used about to it since March yeah. I'm now at the point I absolutely love Zello uh, and I hope that that you all will as well uh, I think all the reasons that Jeff outlined make uh, a lot of sense and we hope that with this new product and new name it's a new chapter a new beginning and one that we're extremely excited about and, and hopefully you guys will be as well I'd like to, just, there are people that do love it right out of the gate. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we're going to change gears again. Jeff, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. Will Zello cost more? Oh, it's a great question. So will Zello cost more? Um, so currently, no. Um, Zello has the same price as Career Cruising for K-12. and. We view this as introductory pricing that we've provided to make it very easy for clients to migrate from Career Cruising for K-12 to Zello if they choose to. So there's, it's not a price issue, it's simply what product do you want to use? And, and that's, that's the way we want it to be, is for people to be able to make that smooth transition. At the same time, as we have throughout our history, and like any company, we're always assessing price and trying to understand what is the right price for Zello. So we'll need to investigate that, and we'll need to understand that um, you know, better in, in the longer term. Um, I think everyone who's worked with us as Career Cruising knows that we're very much committed to delivering value. We're very much aware of the kind of budgets that, that people face, and that, that will be um, some of the things that we certainly keep in mind as, as we price Zello moving forward. But again, to, to restate, in, in, with current introductory pricing, schools and districts can move from Career Cruising to Zello uh, at no additional cost. All right, thank you. Thanks. So this next one's for you as well. Um, for folks that have a current license or a contract with the company um, for career cruising, how will that be affected? 
So there will be a bit of a recurring theme with some of my answers here uh, because a lot, a lot of the questions are about change and what does this mean for me and what does this mean now. And I, I think as a company we're very conscious about trying to provide as much continuity as possible. We did make a change in the past um, with the overall look and feel of crew cruising at one point and we released it kind of en masse to, to all of our users and you know, in, in, in hindsight, that was probably not the best thing to do. So we're being very careful and cautious about, about how we roll Zello at this time. So, so, you know, getting to this question, what does that mean for people with their current career cruising contract? It, it really means that there's no change right now, that you can continue using career cruising as you have moving forward. Um, the current contract you have will continue to, to run as, as expected. Um, you, when you renew, would have the opportunity to renew with career cruising or move to Zello, which you can do at any time. You can choose to migrate to Zello. So unless you choose to, to move to Zello or choose to do something different, you have the opportunity to, to stay right where you are and you'll continue to get the same kind of support from the company that you're currently receiving. What about libraries, colleges, employment centers, some of the other customer types that we serve? Is Zello only for, for K-12 schools? Very good question. Um, probably, and that, that was one we got from quite a few people. Yes. Um, so the answer is that right now, Zello is for grades six to 12. Um, and there's a little bit of a story behind how that came to be. So when we looked at building Zello, one of the things that we appreciated more, I think, than we had in the past was the complexity of the problem that we're trying to solve. Mm -hmm. uh, you're trying to figure out where that intersection point is between the, the individual, their, their understanding of themselves and, and what their opportunities are. And that changes over time, that changes depending on stage of life. And the questions or the, um, the issues that someone who's 13, 14, 15, 16, what they're thinking about in terms of their future plan, very, very different from what someone might be experience at, experiencing when they're in college or as an adult. And historically, um, with Career Cruising, we had tried to build a product that met all of those needs at the same time. And I think what we came to realize is, if the, you know, given the complexity of the problem and given the uniqueness of the needs of those different groups, if we we're gonna start brand new, we're not gonna be able to serve all needs at, you know, from the outset. But what we did want to do was create a foundational experience that, that would be able, with some small adjustments, um, be able to meet the needs of, of different groups. If we think about this problem of creating a successful future, it is a, it's a fairly, um, it, it's a problem that we all, at some point or other, uh, will be working towards dealing with. And so it's, it's, it's universal. And the experience of trying to solve that, there are a lot of similarities regardless of age. So I feel that what we have right now with Zello is something that we can build on so that we will have something that will meet the needs of libraries, colleges, and employment centers. It will take some time, um, and we'll put that same process that I described earlier to work to meet those, those unique needs of those groups. Um, in the meantime, Libraries, colleges, employment centers can continue to use career cruising. Nothing will change. So in the short term, everything is in a good situation. And we will be working as quickly as we can to, um, to figure out how to make Zello something that will be great for those users as well. I, I'd just add to that. I think a lot of people maybe perceive that because Zello has been launched, that now everyone's using Zello and I'm getting left behind. But I don't have the data in front of me, but the reality is it's 99.99% of, of our clients are still using career cruising. And, and it's going to take time for everyone to migrate. Um, and we want them to be able to migrate at the time that, that is right for them. Um, and so, so it's not really a reality yet that everyone is on Zello. Zello is, is still a little bit about the future, and we're going to try to help get people there as fast as we can. But that, that process will take time. So we offer another program called Inspire, which links uh, students to local employers, community me mentors, that kind of thing. Um, is Inspire part of Zello? So for people moving over to Zello, can they use Inspire? So answer to that, uh, today, no. Um, but in the future, absolutely. 
Um, we believe Inspire offers uh, tremendous potential um, for helping students and connecting businesses uh, with the education community. Um, we feel it's a game changer. Exactly how Inspire will manifest itself in Zello is going to take some time. Um, already, uh, Jeff, myself, and T, who's our head of product experience, have had a number of meetings uh, trying to just think about what could we do that would be amazing and connected with everything else we built with Zello. Those discussions are ongoing. Uh, we already have some very good ideas, and it's now a case of starting to go through that process of testing, ideating, mm -hmm. and figuring out exactly what makes the most sense. Um, but Inspire is definitely 100% a part of our future plans. I, I would just add that, you know, as a company, we've really invested in this space of trying to create these community connections and, and we, we understand the benefit, benefits of that for students and for educators and for community stakeholders. And we've been making those investments for, for a long time. And um, I just, you know, just reiterate what Matt's saying, you know, we're not wavering around that commitment whatsoever. Um, in fact, I'd say we're doubling down. Um, just like everything in career cruising has become better in Zello, so will Inspire. And um, so we're looking forward to, to getting to that. So you talked a little bit about license agreements and that kind of thing, but what about, what about clients who access career cruising or have access to career cruising as part of a state contract, a state or provincial contract? What happens for them? Right, so for a state or provincial contract, the, I mean, the one thing that's a bit different than, let's say, a typical school district where we would work with them to decide, you know, when do you want to move to Zello, is that obviously there, there's a more of a central plan. There's, there's an idea that exists either at the state level or the provincial level about how career cruising should be used. Um, they may have certain requirements and specifications, certain reports that are really, really important. And so we have to be more thoughtful about, about how we roll out um, Zello in those situations. So for every state or province where career cruising is currently licensed statewide or province-wide, you know, we've been providing previews of Zello to people at the state and provincial level. They're well aware of what we're doing. We've been having conversations about how the program could or should roll out in that particular state or province. And it's going to be um, really a situation by situation kind of approach. So, for example, we have some states and, or, or provinces who are already saying any districts that want to migrate to Zello can, can go ahead and do that. Um, at the other, end of the, the other end of the spectrum, we have uh, states or provinces that are saying uh, we're going to move everyone together and that process will probably begin two years from now. It's going to take time because here's, here's what we need to do. And so both of those scenarios are perfectly fine. Um, you know, we're happy to work on a plan. That's really the benefit of having a state or provincial contract is that we can have that type of coordination to make sure that there's a thoughtful plan in place to do a proper rollout. So if you are in a state or province that has a, um, a centralized contract, you can feel assured that those conversations are happening. If you're unsure about the, the situation in your particular region, you can contact us. Or if you do have a direct contact at your state or province, you can contact them um, and find out you know, what the rollout plan is for, for your area. So when clients are ready to move to Zello, mm -hmm. um, here's a frequent question they have. What happens to their students' work? Okay, yeah, no, it's a, a very fair question. Um, at the highest level, so, so you're, we're thinking about, I'm a student in career cruising, now I'm moving to Zello. What do I bring with me? Yes. That's, that's what people want to know. And the answer is whatever makes sense. Um, so in some cases, um, if we've rebuilt a feature, for example, Matchmaker, we've changed it, we've created a story. As a result of going through Matchmaker, um, you'll get a personality style. So we decided, we want students to go through that experience again. They're going to get additional value. They're going to experience it, experience it through Zello. We're not going to bring your matchmaker results. Um, if you've saved a lot of careers, you've saved schools, you've saved majors, you've saved programs, well, we definitely want to retain that. You've done quite a bit of work. That will come over. Um, for those of you who are using Course Planner, 
all of your historical course information, all of your plans, which you've for sure spent a lot of time on, that will all come over as well. So what we've done is look at each feature that's being built and make a decision. Is this data that we want to migrate? Does it make more sense for the student to go through the experience if it's changed, if it somehow manifests itself in a different way? Then, then we would say, okay, no, we're not going to. Um, so each, each decision depends on the feature. Um, but one of the things that we also did, just to make sure that nothing got left behind, was to allow students who are using Zello, if they had a, a career cruising account, they have an easy way to single sign on back into their career cruising account where they can see all of the work that they had done in the past. It's all available. And so it's not that anything is being lost. Um, it's all still going to be available. And at, at this point, for those who have been making the switch, um, the approach that we've taken, I think, has worked very well. All right, very good. So we've been talking a fair bit about the product. Let's talk a little bit about, about the other side of our business, the other great work that we do. What's been done for implementation? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of times, you know, there's, you might wonder, well, is, are you guys a product company? I see the product that you make, or, or are you a services company? Do you provide services? Well, it's, it absolutely has to be a bit of both. I mean, the company is, is really, it's 50-50. And, and we all know that that's just the reality, that it takes great product to engage students and serve the needs of educators, but we also have to have great working relationships to make sure that the program gets used the way it should. And so, you know, just as we built up the whole product side of, of our business to be able to develop tools like Zello, we've had to grow and evolve the services side of our business as well to make sure that, that schools can be successful and achieve their goals. Um, you know, one of the core values of our company is, is that we see ourselves as a trusted advisor. We aspire to be the trusted advisor for all of the clients that we work with to try to help them achieve their results. And I mean, just, just to run through the teams that are in place, to make this happen, um, so when, uh, when clients may be first engaged with career cruising, they might be talking to our sales team. And our whole approach to sales is about uncovering client needs and then positioning our program to show how they can be successful, how they can meet those needs. So right from the get-go, we're focused on, on helping our clients achieve results. If we, we're fortunate enough and they decide to move forward with us, then they're going to engage with our onboarding team. And our onboarding team does all of the work required to connect with their student information system, to get all their course book configured online. There is a data integration team who builds the tools and the technology that allow us to integrate with all kinds of different SIS vendors in all kinds of different ways and situations in a way that's safe and secure. Um, once someone is onboarded, they're going to work with a dedicated success manager. That success manager is going to understand exactly what they're trying to accomplish, work on a plan to help them get there. And um, at, if at any time people either in the schools or in the districts need support, they're going to interact with our frontline customer solutions team who, who will help them get what they need. So there are a number of teams in place. It's going to be a team effort to support Zello, just as it has been a team effort to, to support career cruising. Uh, all of those teams are, have been trained and are ready um, to help customers through the migration process and help them be successful with Zello. So, so tons has been done. There's another project going on that, that's quite interesting right now, which is um, uh, with a focus on customer experience and trying to revision what that whole experience should feel like. I think we've evolved over the years processes that meet the needs of schools and meet the needs of educators, but we think there's also an opportunity to, to reimagine how we do this from end to end, be as creative as we can and think about how we can deliver as much value and really anticipate the needs of, of, uh, of educators and administrators. So that's another project that we're quite excited about that, that's very much in this vein. That is exciting. Very exciting. All right, another technical question. Will Zello integrate with my student information system like Career Cruising does? Great question, and it really, I mean, it ties quite closely to what Jeff was just talking about. Um, one, of the, one of the potential pain points <laughs> for any implementation is the data integration. So getting the, the data that we need from your student information system into Zello. Um, so over the past few years, we've had the opportunity 
to work on that problem, and we've made amazing progress. Um, the first thing is that how we process data integrations, we've, that has been re-architected again from the ground up, um, and we've had a number of important benefits come from that. Um, the first thing is just, before I get to that, is to understand if you currently have an integration up and running with Career Cruising, switching that to Zello is extremely easy. Uh, and obviously it was built with that, uh, the knowledge that that was gonna be step one. So, so that's in place. Um, but some of the other things we've done uh, where, where there are student information systems that have APIs that we can tap into, for example, PowerSchool, uh, we, have, we have gone deep uh, to leverage those capabilities to make the integration uh, much, much easier. Uh, we have also, um, as part of that, from, from the beginning, had the idea that we were going to build a capability for daily uh, data integrations. So that is now in place. Uh, you, we can now do that. Um, for those of you that that works for your system, then, then we can support that. We still support also the, the file integration, so that's an option, um, but automation has been uh, improved there as well. Um, another thing we've been working on is single sign-on. So we support all of the major single sign-on technologies that are out there. So if you have a learning management system or if you support single sign-on from your SIS, we can support that now as well. Uh, and the goal there is just to make sure we make it as easy as possible for the students to, to get to the program. Um, with the new architecture, we're also experimenting with some other ideas. Uh, some of that involves bulk uploading of educator accounts, uh, syncing with your course, uh, your, course data, your course management database. And the third thing we're looking at is whether or not if you have student avatars in your SIS system, can we import those automatically into Zello so that when a student arrives for the first time, they have a friendly greeting. So lots is being done there. Um, the team that we have, they, they make magic happen, uh, which is great for, great for us and great for you. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you. So our last and final question. Jeff, this one's for you. How do we get started with Zello? So for folks out there mm. that are ready. Absolutely. Um, just reach out. Give us a call. Send us an email. We'll, we'll be happy to help. Um, if you're not currently a client, you'll probably end up talking to the sales team first who will really want to understand your needs and, and, and try to understand how Zello will fit. Um, if you are a current client, then you'll be talking to your success manager. Um, just call in, you'll get routed to the right person, or you'll be talking to someone on the client solutions team. And step one in that, in that process will really be to have a conversation. And that conversation focuses around how you're currently using the program, what, what are some of the goals you're accomplishing with that program, what are some of the critical features for you, um, you know, what are, what's your timeline, when are you most busy with the program. So we want to understand your situation and together try to figure out what is the best time for you to, to make that migration happen. It may be that you feel like it's not this school year and maybe it's next school year that, that we're looking at. If you feel like we want to get to Zello as fast as possible, then what would happen is we would set a date um, and, and say, okay, if, if you're choosing is March 15th, we're gonna, we're gonna do that migration on March 15th. And the actual migration process is, is very straightforward. There's no work on the school or district, district end. It's, it's really managed by us internally. And all the work is done within a day. As Matt has described, a lot of the data from Career Cruising comes over automatically, will be in Zello. Students who were logging into Career Cruising now start logging into Zello. There is a step for educators to create uh, accounts, so creating new accounts for educators in Zello. Um, but the process is seamless, painless. It, it goes quite quickly. So if, if you're interested, you should certainly give us a call and, and we'll just talk through what is, is the best way to get you started. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you both. Thank you, and John. Thanks, everybody thanks. who submitted your questions. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I, hope, I hope you see just how truly thoughtful and intentional we are with this business. We realize that the work we do, the work that you do, is incredibly important in helping people create their successful future. So hang in there, hang on the journey with us. We're going places. I invite you to reach out to us. Your contact information for us is on the screen. If you've got general questions and you wanna, you wanna email them to us, use the info at zello.world email address. Phone number's there as well. 
we look forward to talking to you and thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.